Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Tonight is Purple Pill Preston Night, where we're interviewing everyone's friend, it's Tyler. <laughs> everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hello, everybody. Hi. Nice to, nice to get to talk to you, Tyler. My oh, same. It's an honor to speak to you guys, uh, I guess, face-to-face or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, my friend... How about you and I got a chance to check out a couple of your videos before on this? Oh yeah, how did you like my videos? Yeah, they're they're short and to the point. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I try not to make my videos drag out because like there's some YouTubers uh, I noticed that they drag on forever, and so I just want to make my videos like you know film it in a in a way that's actually short to the point. And keep the intro. We love the intro. Oh, yeah, like, you want to hear, like, the story about the introduction? What? Okay, it was, like, uh, I believe it was, I want to say 2000, 2014 or whatever. I was, like, in some sort of Skype meeting. And so what happened was that my group of friends, they tell me, hey, is everyone's friend is Tyler. And it just so happened, of course, like, one of the people that I was friends with was, like, a musician. And so he said, I want to make an intro for you. And then he started doing the song he sent me the mp3 and from there is like of course what it is right now and it's kind of funny because more recently i think two days yeah it was two days ago i actually refilmed the intro so it's much more up to date so that's the story about my um my song you have a, yeah you have a picture of yourself looking all badass like that and then followed by a cartoon of yourself yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's also kind of funny because, like, somebody else also drew me that cartoon. <laughs> so I figure why not have it for the introduction. Yeah. That's Brass's job. <laughs> well, yeah, it makes my job a lot easier because I usually have to make the, the cartoon photos of, of the guests for the, the thumbnail. But you already got that covered. Yeah, 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 because... um. It was actually made by somebody who called himself a fan of mine. I think it was, yeah, four years ago. And, of course, it just stuck. It just stuck like that. So every time I make, like, a video with a thumbnail, I just use that same image. And I'm really grateful that someone actually made it for me. It was really awesome that they did that. Yeah, it is very um, well kept. Well, today we want to go over, like, it's more going to be where like typical interview stuff where we're going to ask you a couple of questions and you know, if we have time, we'll just have a general discussion along with that. Okay. So let's see, we got a series of questions here. And the first one is now you've been described as a sort of loose cannon of sorts in regards to politics. How would you (laughs) describe yourself politically? Wow. That's like a really interesting question. Well, first and foremost, like, as far as me being registered to vote, I'm registered as independent, mostly because I don't really believe in sticking to, like, one party systems or another party system, because I think you need to actually look and evaluate how candidates actually portray themselves and how they present their policies. And so for elections, on some occasions, I would just vote for, like, Democrat. On other occasions, I would just vote for a Republican. But as far as my social leanings, I I tend to lean socially liberal on things. For example, my personal thoughts about drugs. It's not just like I think marijuana should just be legal. I think all drugs should be legal. As far oh, as as far as like my thoughts about like prostitution, the last time I checked at least was that I think it was like Las Vegas or somewhere that actually has it legal and that everyone else is like illegal so i think that prostitution should also be legalized my thoughts about marriage i think that of course i am in favor of gay marriage a matter of fact back in uh, 2012 yeah it was yeah 2012 during like obama versus mitt Romney, i actually voted in favor of gay marriage before it had the supreme court case 
And so I also believe in gay marriage. I also think that, of course, gay couples should adopt other kids. And I don't understand why there are actually some people that try to prevent that from happening, but that's my personal views. On a lot of issues, I don't actually subscribe into like the idea of that we should always keep tradition. Because I think sometimes in order to progress as a society, that there actually needs some sort of changes to actually push people forth. Of course, too much progressive is actually a bit much. And so sometimes you do, in fact, need conservatives to slow you down. So I think, like, I see, like, both sides as yin and yang. They both really need each other. And I think it's kind of sad that we always tend to just, you know, demonize each other because you're, like, a different view from another person. And I kind of feel sad to see, like, a lot of people who call themselves, like, liberal or leftist to actually demonize those all the time from the right just because they're right wing or assume that they're bad because they're right wing. And so I don't think that actually helps for conversations. I think when you have conversations to people, you should always try to be as polite as possible, not always yell at each other. And I've seen like these stories or hear about these stories on Twitter or whatever, like the news of people breaking up friendships just because they're like a Trump supporter. And I don't think just because someone's a Trump supporter, I would just automatically just break up the friendship. I want to, you know, chat with them and also understand their perspective. Because if everybody thought the exact same thing for me, it would be so boring because I think that having different opinions and having different groups of friends can actually broaden your perspective on a lot of things and actually get you informed on a lot of things. But again, to answer your question, to get back to your question, I tend to lean socially on issues according to my political compass test. And what are the balance things out? What are you conservative about? What am I conservative about? I, I'm not sure if it's like a conservative position or not. But I guess because a lot of people on the far, far left advocate for open borders, I say the quote unquote conservative position I probably have would be like, you know, illegal immigrations. I don't think it's okay for illegal immigrants to come to our country. I think they should probably go through like a legal process like everybody else. It's not fair for illegal immigrants to come here and actually do the process properly while illegal immigrants also come to our countries. And a lot of businesses tend to benefit from like these immigrants, n these illegal immigrants not having knowledge about the minimum wage, because of course, like the nation, I, the nationwide minimum wage is like seven, yeah, seven twenty-five. And of course, I guess this depends on the state. Now, it's not like some states have fifteen dollars or whatever, but for the most part, it's like seven twenty-five. If I remember correctly. And I don't like how they pay like the illegal workers much lower wages. And of course, people who also are locals who are born in the country don't get their jobs either. So I don't like how illegal immigrants come to our country. I think they should do it in a legal matter. But I think that's probably the only kind of real conservative position I'd possibly have. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fair. I completely agree with you when it comes to matters of uh, drugs and prostitution. Of course, I'm sort of known online as the cocaine and hookers guy. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I'm completely on board on that regard. Uh, another, to another topic we tackle on sometimes is uh, abortion. Uh, what's your position on that? My personal position on abortion, I tend to rele reluctantly, by the way, reluctantly be pro-choice. I think the whole entire term of like abortion is really sad. It's like every time I have to talk about abortion like it's kind of sad because the whole process is just ugh. but i also understand like for cases like for incest or like for rape and these other kind of extreme examples that of course we should not make it legalized illegalized excuse me because i think that if you were to have that to happen of course like the mother is also at risk of dying too so if it has to be done then it has to be done at like these sort of medical professional centers for it to be done. But I also, I really, really hate it, really, really hate it when a lot of far left activists try to celebrate abortion. They do it all the time with these sort of 
late night shows yes. and they have have like these sort of like hashtags that's like shout your abort like no like this is supposed to be like a private matter this is supposed to be something that's actually sad because you're terminating a life and so if it, by doing that kind of stuff you make everybody look really bad you make everybody else look like maniacs so I don't like this kind of activist that try to trivialize abortion like that because it's obviously a personal matter and honestly something that should be taken very seriously and not made fun of. Yeah, I remember how funny it was like. Originally, it was, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, it was with Bill Clinton, it was um, safe, legal, and rare, but they sort of, the far left has sort of chucked that completely out the window. Right. It's just, then I also saw something that was just mind blowing. I think it was a few years ago or two years ago where some of these people, I believe it was like New York or whatever, maybe it's like New York or those blue states where they proposed to have like abortion after birth or something. And I'm like, are you, f that's fucking murder. Like no way. So it seems as though like, as far as my position of abortion, obviously I feel like I'm, pro-choice but it's not a very reluctant matter because like i understand the like, gravity of the situation but i also don't think of course like people should celebrate it or minimize the gravity like of what in cases doing. of like rape or yeah, yeah 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 i mean that's pretty fair um yeah it's get on to this second. what are your thoughts on president oompa loompa reject <laughs> <laughs> the walking orange himself <laughs> oh god okay president trump there's a uh, where do i even begin with president trump i'll start with the most recent thing okay let's begin with obama okay so <laughs> with the whole entire birther movement like it's so strange it's like the most stupid it's not just obama that actually he it was it was also like uh Clinton, too, because Clinton and Trump went after Obama. They both say that he was not from the United States, even though, of course, he was born in freaking Hawaii. So the whole entire birther movement was just stupid to me. He also attacked free speech a lot. Like, he sued Bill Maher, I believe, for making some sort of orangutan joke. And yeah, he, he also... Like an orangutan, orangutan, which he sort of does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And he sued them. And then there was also some sort of threat. I remember it was for Saturday Night Live because it was Alec Baldwin making fun of Trump, too. And then there was also some sort of, I believe, commercial criticizing him. And he was also trying to sue that company as well. Yeah, so he doesn't have a really good record for that sort of free speech stuff, even though he's supposedly supposed to be advocate for it. Yeah, it's like people back in, yeah, what was it? Yeah, 2016, they were saying that he was supposed to be the free speech candidate. Like, no, like all of his actions so far has been against free speech. Then it's also the matter of video games. Now, uh, the, the topic about video games, it's not just for Tr Donald Trump either. It's like a lot of the p politicians who happen to be Republican have been attacking video games for years and years and years and years. So, I noticed Huh? Wait, the Democrats what? Well. Oh, the Democrats too? Like, I've been some Democrats being on board with the whole bashing video game as well. Uh, Although, the far left, mainly what they do is they go after, um, like, let's say, I'm trying to think how to, like, Bayonetta, or one of those, like... Um, oh, because, it's, like, because it's, like, too sexy, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's sort of a weird thing, so... On the Republican side, they're saying danger. Um, video games are too dangerous. Like, um, but on the other hand, they're on the the far left side. They're saying that video games are too sexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole and, entire idea about like games being too sexualized. It seemed to start with Anita Sarkeesian back in 2014. Uh, I re I remember like when I saw the videos for the first time. Like, are people really taking her seriously? And then I learned to find out that they were actually playing her videos in college campuses. This so, is all uh, retroactive. They've uh, there's Tomb Raider and Tekken and stuff like that had sexy characters for a long time, and then then Sarkeesian came bitching about one of them on Metal Gear Solid Five. So, uh, uh, that one was fucking sexy, but <laughs> that, that, like her was just a major distraction. 
And what's so funny about it too, like she's also been caught not actually recording her own footage. She just takes people's clips from YouTube and say that's her own clips. There was also this commercial for like the women's versus tropes thing where she had like this Xbox controller and you can clearly see that it was not even on. <laughs> and then also the most famous example I could think of right now is of course uh, Hitman. Now there was this mission where you were like some sort of strip place or whatever. And she tried to make it like, as it's like some sort of like, you have to hit the women first to progress in the level. However, it turns out that, of course, you could do other things besides just hitting the woman. Ooh. Yeah, so... <laughs> so, of course, the attack on video games uh, is another example of, like, Donald Trump because he actually had, like, some sort of clip show of all these sort of violent video games, like Call of Duty or stuff, as evidence that it makes people want to do these kind of stuff. He also has some sort of meeting in the White House about video games it was the strangest news i ever heard it was like yeah two three years or something ago and then i remember of course like for antifa it's happened uh yeah this week where he announced that he wants to call it like some sort of terrorist organization now let's be clear i do believe that of course antifa are just evil like they i don't like how they just bash windows and of course hit people and stuff so I'm obviously against Antifa. And I also find it strange that some people say that they're not an organization because they obviously organize. They have their own flag. They have groups across the country, not just for this country, but also like outside of this country. They freaking plan out these attacks. So obviously, obviously there's some sort of organization going behind it. But at the same time, I don't want to automatically assume that because someone is a supporter of Antifa, they're immediately a terrorist. Like, for example, obviously, if a person bashed the windows or bashed a person, they should actually, you know, face consequences. That's for sure. But if there's, like, some sort of, you know, college student just supporting Antifa, I don't think we should probably, you know, look after that kind of person. So I feel as though if he's not, you know, more like uh, into more detail about how they're gonna do this kind of stuff, it might actually, you know, remove some sort of type of due process or something. Yeah, and it could challenge free speech. That was a big worry on the libertarian side that yes. it's mainly a way to just um, basically do a witch hunt. Speaking of video games, you've you've never heard the end of this uh, about Grand Theft Auto always inspiring uh, violence and. There's you can you ha you have the freedom to pick up hookers and then after they give you head you kill them and then take their money. <laughs> yeah, that's you true. Running over everybody over and shooting swaths of cops and national guard they throw at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Grand Theft Auto is still like one of my favorite franchises. Actually, I just constantly play it. It's especially fun with the cheat codes all the time. Yeah. Yeah, um, but uh, like, but I really hate it. Like nowadays, like games don't even have like the freaking cheat codes anymore, except for Grand Theft Autos and a few others. Yeah. Because in the past, I remember buying like these books of like these cheat codes, and you just press in the cheat codes, and it would actually work. Nowadays, they don't even have that anymore. And I also miss how they don't even have like the manuals because. They used to put like a lot of effort in the manuals for games. Now there's like barely none at all. Just like a piece of paper and just that's it. I just kind of wish that they could actually spend more time and effort for the physical editions nowadays compared to what they do. So anyway, getting back to Donald Trump, of course, we talked about like uh, Antifa. We talked about free speech. We talked about did we talk about drugs? Yeah, nope. a little bit. That was in the first question, but okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump but okay, so like for like drugs, I think for um, of course I already answered like my personal stance about drugs. But as far as I remember, like Donald Trump, he had of course Jeff Sessions, and he wanted to like, crack down on marijuana. But luckily, luckily he actually got Jeff Sessions out. But then also at the same time. It was also kind of strange because he also um, attacked a blink. I think it was some sort of like a vapor, like vape, vape. Yeah. 
where basically people just smoke the vape and of course he made it illegal because apparently they actually try to say that it kills people even though there's not much evidence that it actually killed that many people or something. Well, I mean, it's like three people that we know of died from vape and that's like more people die from that every other hour from cigarettes and alcohol. Right, and I think it's just a personal choice. Like, why would they make that illegal? It's like, it's stupid to just make it illegal, but whatever. And, of course, like, uh, what else do I want to add on to the list of stuff I think about Trump? <laughs> uh, until, until, you, until you get to that, there's a uh, weed, which, um, if they do yeah. legalize it, it does kind of take the fun out of smoking it because it's illegal and it sort of helps with the buzz. Right, right, right. But overall, I think that just in general, Donald Trump is not that great. And I kind of hate to, you know, admit this out loud, but it's not actually a secret because, like, for my original Twitter account, I openly admitted of actually voting for Donald Trump. And I honestly just regretted it because after all the stuff that he did right, right now and continues to do, I just feel as though that, like, I did a really bad vote because I honestly think that the the main reason why I voted for Donald Trump was probably because of peer pressure, because everybody wanted to do it to just trigger the lip tarts. And it's kind of sad because I don't think using, like, to trigger the lip tarts is a good argument because I think you should actually vote. now. I guess now because I'm much more wiser now, but I think the best way to actually, you know, vote for people is by policy and not to just trigger them. I mean, obviously, what no matter what you do could be offensive to somebody. That's a fact. But I don't think trying to intentionally trigger somebody because you want to vote someone differently is, act, is actually, to me, counterproductive because I think you should vote for someone that actually represents your values and actually how you feel, not because you want to make people upset. It was at that it was at that point that I realized our country's going to hell either way, so I flipped the coin and landed mm -hmm. on Trump. Right. <laughs> and me basically I voted for Trump as well, although mainly it came down to me hating Hillary more. Yeah, I think it's like a lot of people feel that way. I think a lot of people also, besides being part of a bandwagon, was also, you know, looked at Clinton too. So that's, I think that's a good, another factor why so many people voted for him. Well, I mean, but, you also uh, remember that Trump is the first orange president. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, he's, uh, and he's another celebrity um, president like Reagan, who's also hero worship to this day. <laughs> yeah, that well, I mean, we had we had eight years of the first black president. Now we got Trump, and he's the first orange president. <laughs> hey, we're being we're being very diverse in the colors of presidents we get. <laughs> yeah, but still don't have a Native American president, which we need. Oh yeah, but uh, what are your thoughts on Biden? Do you think you could be able to defeat Orange Man? No, I don't think so. Now, I noticed that, for example, he actually stumbles a lot on his words, or sometimes he just does not know what he's saying. For example, facts matter more than facts, or <laughs> something about the record player, something about, <laughs> I remember that. Um, and then he also had like this sort of thing that everybody was talking about last week about the black karma. Like he said that if you don't vote for me, you're not black. And that was like the single, that's like the most racist thing I probably heard. Probably more racist than anything I heard from Trump, actually. So that comment to me is kind of offensive because like it kind of removes the autonomy of black people. It assumes that all black people must vote a certain way. When in reality, that's not true. I think people have the right to vote whoever they want to. But this is not just a problem for the left, too. It's just for the right. Because I noticed, like, a lot of these personalities, like uh, Charlie Kirk and also, like, what was it? Owens? Kansas Owens. Yeah, they yeah. say, like, um, that black people should get off the, the Democratic plantation, which, to me, I don't see any difference between that and also what Biden says. Because it also assumes that black people cannot vote for Democrats if they want to. So... Of course, the answer lies in the middle. Like, obviously, everybody should vote whoever actually 
been a, like who actually represents them the best, and not because of some sort of you know partisan party lines. Well, I mean, at least you know with Candace Owens, she can't be racist because um, racism is prejudice plus power. Oh, I hate that. I hate it when people say that. Like, because, like, obviously anybody could be racist. Like, you don't need a freaking institution to be racist. Like, you could just be on the ground level and be racist. And if if that's the case that, of course, like, like racism requires, like, power... Then does that mean like all these African leaders in those countries are also racist too? If they really want to go that far, and it's not racist. I know. If, it's yeah. <laughs> and it's not racist if the white man's the target. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so stupid. I've always like... found it funny it's like that they do that. Now you actually touched on you know the black community. Um, you touched a bit on what Biden said about you ain't black if you don't vote for him. Um. Now, being a black man, your community is often very much invoked by both political parties for better or worse. What are your thoughts on that? And what political issues do you actually see affecting the black community more? Well, I think some sort of political issues that we're facing right now. Well, it's not just I don't think it's just black people, but anybody. And this is the topic of police brutality. Now, of course, everybody heard about the story about, like, uh, George Floyd and what happened to him. Like, he got killed by an officer putting his knee to his neck. And, of course, there have been, like, countless, like, riots and protests going on right now. And this is actually worse than the Ryan and King situation because this guy's dead and he was just beaten to a pulp. Right. And so it seems to me like it's not just a black thing, but just... Brutality in general is like something that affects everybody. And so I think we need to actually do something about it and actually change like how we conduct things for the police stuff. But I also want to say that I don't support Black Lives Matter either for my own personal reasons. Of course, everybody's against police brutality. Like there's no disagreement about that. Yeah. yeah but- Motherfuckers think they think they're untouchable and get away with anything. Like I've had numerous run-ins with them. Like fuck those motherfuckers. Right. So the main reason why I don't support Black Lives Matter is because like a lot of the people, not just like the individual activists, but the leaders themselves are just blatantly just anti-white and anti-cop and think that all cops are bastards, which is not true. Yes, there are bad cops. That's true, but not all of them are like bastards. And so, for example, I mean, oh, you can you can go on. Sorry. Yeah, well, it's fine. I was just gonna say that. I mean, it's it's true with like I always tell black people: if you really think the cops specifically go after you real well, you should actually see what they do to the people in the um the the trailer parks. Right, right. Like, and so, and so, I think, of course, it's anti-white, anti-cop because. First of all, there was this uh, guy, he used to be part of Black Lives Matter. His name was uh, DeRay McKinnon. And he said on like AJ Plus that, like like we said earlier, that black people cannot be racist against uh, white people because of prejudice and bearer. And of course, there was also this founder for Black Lives Matter Canada. She also stated that uh please Allah give me don't give me the strength give me the strength to actually not kill white people and it was also crazy so then there was also this one instance where um they went to there was like some sort of gay pride parade in Canada and Black Lives Matter also interrupted that gay pride parade there was also the incidents about of course uh, the library where people were just reading books and they just storm in and just said, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. And then also, I remember this clip from 2015 where these activists, they just put up a sign and it said, like, uh, pigs in a blanket, fried them like bacon and some sort of stupid crap. And then also, I remember um, some sort of, like, one of the founders stated that she was inspired by, like, this cop killer. Her name was, like, Asada Shakur. And that's, like, the main inspiration for Black Lives Matter. And so I personally, even though like, you know, 2020, and maybe the movement have changed since 2015, but it's, like, one of the main reasons why I cannot trust that movement is because of what happened. 
and what we know and what we documented from 2015. And so hopefully it would change their attitude or how they approach stuff because honestly, that kind of stuff is just cancerous. But uh, getting back to like your question, like of course, police brutality affects everybody. I also think <laughs> that for like urban neighborhoods that we should actually focus more on like, you know, improving schools because sometimes the schools are also run down. Like, of course, the books are not up to date. And of course, materials are also not up to date. And so I think it would be nice if we can actually, you know, fix the school systems and actually, you know, make it nice for people to get their educations. Or sometimes find good teachers and actually connect with the students. Because if you don't actually get good teachers, students will not connect. And so it's very important to actually, you know, get qualified teachers to make, you know, students learn about different topics like math or science and history and so on. As far as the other issue that I noticed within the black community, it's also the issue of like having no fathers because a lot of families, they don't have fathers because they're in jail. And of course, like a lot of the stuff that they're in jail for obviously is like um, drug related. I think it's like as high. I'm not sure if it's true or not. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's probably as high as like 70% are in jail because of some sort of drug related crime. And so I think by legalizing like stuff like marijuana, it would probably actually help that kind of situation go down. And also, I believe that they should probably, you know, value the family system more because obviously to, you know, raise kids in an environment without their father and actually just have their mom is not that great because it takes two to tangle. You need to actually have both parents to learn about different values and different lessons to grow up. And so when you have, of course, like nobody to look up for as a father figure, I don't think it's actually really healthy. And uh, also there's uh, getting back on the bad side of cops, like where I'm at, there was two of them recently had a spree where they were stopping women and asked to give them head in exchange, to give them out of tickets because, you know, people were like, oh, no, no, please. I can't afford a ticket. I don't need a ticket. What, what can I do? Anything I can do? He's like, hmm, I have something in mind. And they give him head and then sometimes they would just give him the ticket anyway and send them on their way. Wow. That's horrible. <laughs> it's funny to, you know, to, to sort of broaden them into giving you head, but to give them a ticket afterwards, that's a, something else. <laughs> that, that's consider, that's, should that be considered rape? Um, uh, I mean, yeah. like, if they could say that, yes, I want to give you, like, head. Um, oh, man, like, that's actually a good question. I actually never thought about it, actually. <laughs> um... Mm, if they said yes to the head, then it's not really rape. But if, but 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 if the officer forced her to you know suck his dick, then obviously it's rape. Well, yeah, clearly yeah. Yeah. they got him though. Yeah, they got him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How would you rate the effectiveness of both um, the Democratic and Republican parties in addressing the coronavirus pandemic? Well, I think that, um, hmm, how do I answer this? I think for the Republicans' case, it seems as though that both sides, to me, appear to actually care about the situation, though I think there seems to be, like, a lot of misinformation going on. For example, I remember, like, some of the politicians, like, on the left, they started the state because of the WHO, they started to state that uh, you should not wear any mask under any circumstances. And I think that was incredibly irresponsible of them to do that. Because obviously, if you were to wear a mask, it would probably, it would actually prevent the spread of the virus and also not just the virus, but also germs in general. Like if a person just coughs, of course, obviously you don't know what they have. And so if they cough and it comes near your face, like it's there to just protect your face. And so... Obviously, I think the left tend to, of course, misinform people about, like, the mask. But then after they corrected the mask and actually forced people to wear the mask to go inside stores, it seemed like the right is also doing that, too, where they say, well, you see, I'm not going to wear the mask because of my personal freedom. 
<laughs> and I'm like, dude, this is like Darwinism. Like, obviously, the mask is actually is actually gonna actually help you out with the whole entire coronavirus. Thing. Hey, their body, their choice. <laughs> <laughs> and here's, one, here's one of the, the biggest ironies of the um, this whole protest what? thing. Like, the Democrats lost their shit when conservatives were doing it, were protesting. But when they do it, it's okay. It's okay when they do anything. Right. I, mean, there's, so, I mean, that's sort of typical tribalism within the parties. Right. And so there's also this one uh, quotation from Donald Trump that I saw that I just could not believe that he said. And, of course, I'm talking about the whole, what was it, bleach Lysol comment. And I'm like, are you serious? Like he said, like, to inject yourself with, like, the bleach or Lysol to prevent the coronavirus. I'm like, that's like the was that, biggest... Wasn't he, was he being sarcastic, though, or did, was he really serious? I'm not sure if he's I serious. Think, I think it was more of a miss... Like, I think he had something going... Like, I think he had gotten some information from some guy, and he cut out a lot of the information and just summed it up, and it came <laughs> out weird. <laughs> you don't say. Because that's sort of what Trump does. Like, someone gives him a piece of information... And, it, you know, the hamster that goes through his brain sort of just picks out, like, parts of that, and it just comes out of his mouth. Oh, and you know what's this, uh, this funny as shit is that he gets, uh, he got, he finally got banned from Twitter for, like, uh, for, like, a day. Wait, are you talking about that comment that he did about, like, uh... When the looters start looting and start shooting? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, he, the president of the United States censored on Twitter. <laughs> That's funny. It's kind of funny uh, because at the same time he was also proposing for like companies like Twitter to be more open like uh, for the public against like this social media censorship. It's, it's, it's a biased platform. Everybody's known this for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Another thing that, that made my week is that CNN reporters got arrested. <laughs> uh, man, we're living in the twilight zone, I swear. <laughs> I think we're living somewhere between uh, Soylent Green and Mad Max. Well, I mean, I mean, what people said, what like, how stressful this whole situation has been, and I said, "What are you talking about?" Like, you know, on one minute I get to watch um, a bunch of women beating the hell out of each other for um, a, a roll of toilet paper, and the next <laughs> after that I get to watch a bunch of um, people burning down their own neighborhood to prove a point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, I just look at this from the, like, outside of my house and just laugh at it. Because all this going on right now, it reminds me so much about 2015 or 2016. <laughs> it's just, like, the amount of same, the same amount of absurdity going on right now. It's, wow. Welcome to Clown World. I know, like, it's kind of funny because I work at some sort of supermarket and... For the first three months, like of course, the toilet paper was just all out, completely gone. And it actually, of course, yeah, it took three months for it to get like a new shipment of toilet paper. And then we got like a lot of toilet paper now because of people just keep on buying it. It's like more important than food, more important than water. Like everybody must have that toilet paper. You know what the the, press, the sad thing about all this is? That people in the 80s and 90s were itching to get to the 21st century and like, oh, we're going to be so much smarter. Look at all okay. We're going to have, no. te have technology. We're going to go to space and colonize. We're going to oh, experiment with sea monkeys or some shit. We're going to do all of this. We're going to be so much better. And then people now look back, are itching to get back to the 80s and 90s. Like, life was so much better back then. Oh, my God. Like, I don't think... Anybody should have some sort of expectation that the future years would actually get better. I think it's just going to be just a repeat of what we're experiencing right now. So it's just, I'm like just going to just laugh at the meantime of all this madness that we're experiencing right now. Like that stuff you see in dystopian science fiction movies, like there's bits of truth in there. More than you may think. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that. But I'm still waiting for flying cars, like for like Back for the Future, and also the flying, well, like the hovering like skateboard or whatever. Flying, flying hover cars and virtual. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for that. Ne neon skyscrapers and all that. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that. It'll be so cool if we actually have flying cars. 
But then the problem will be like, you know, space traffic and also, you know, air collision. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like, uh, fifth element made it look so much fun. Oh man! Oh, what do you make of the? Um, oh yeah, we already asked you earlier if you lean towards a classical liberal or a mild conservative. So yeah, we're yeah. done with that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so already been done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, what, what do you, you make of the presidential cult of personality, the radical sense of nationalism, and the imposing nature of the far right? That's kind of funny because I actually criticized the far right. Well, they used to call themselves the alt right back when I was criticizing them, and I just could not believe it. Like basically, it was like people like Richard Spencer. It was also some sort of German chick. I forgot her name right now. But it was it was some sort of girl with some sort of glasses. Her name was Rage over like what was it? Rage over Rage Storm. over Storm. Yeah, Rage over Storm. I went to, I went after those kind of people in the past, and it's kind of sad and pathetic the the ideas that they have, because they advocated stuff for like a separate ethno state, where it's like a white only place, and it's kind of funny. Because people like Tara McCartney would actually also advocate for that kind of stuff, even though she's clearly like a minority and they will obviously would not accept her for any reason whatsoever. So, and it was like the stupidest thing that I saw during that time period because so many people advocated for that. And like when people try to push them on, like, how are you going to do that without actually having some sort of, so some sort of, like, some sort of violence against? minorities they would not answer and then of course the whole entire like leak video of richard spencer calling like jews kikes and stuff that was like Ugh. wow yeah. yep you also that was like the her. most racist shit ever you also go after a uh, sargon of a cod and dean esme yeah uh sargon of a cod i don't i don't remember after sargon of a cod actually i remember going after like dean esme before but it was like a long time ago. Like I don't try to go after that guy anymore because it's like too crazy for me. But um, getting back to the alt right, <laughs> like uh, their ideology is stupid, and I criticized them in the past. As far as the idea of like nationalism, I don't think it's inherently wrong for people to be, you know, like. Well, I mean, it's kind of different between like nationalism and patriotism, but I don't think that it's okay to be, like, a white nationalist or, like, a black... Like, I'm not into, like, nationalism at all because I think if you were born a certain way, whether you're, like, black or white, like, there's nothing really to be proud about because I think the only things that you should be proud about is actually your actions and how you conduct yourself and your and own personal achievements that you and do. There, and there's also gay pride. Like, being proud of something you can't control is always... Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Now, obviously, I'm not against gay people. I have right. gay friends. I also talk to, like, you know, gay people all the time. And I don't get, not just for gay pride, but also for Black History Month, too. Like, I don't understand why we need, like, a Black History Month. Because to me, Black history is also American history. And my yeah. personal position about Black History Month is the same exact position as Morgan Freeman. And so it's not just... Gay pride, but it's also Black History Month. I'm pretty consistent across the board with this kind of, you know, being proud of being X race or being proud of X orientation. Like, I don't think there's something to be proud of because you're actually born to be that way. And so you can't really control how you're born. So there's no Black history or white history. It's all it's all Black and all white. Right. Now, getting back to... Um, the cult of personality, right? Yeah, the of basically every Republican president since the 60s. Now, personally, I find it so bizarre how people would just... I'm not sure if it's a joke or if it's, like, you know, being ironic, but they call, like, you know, Donald Trump, like, 
emperor god and whatever and have them have the crown and stuff i think uh, i think some of it might be joking yeah it was just this one guy was drunk out of his ass and posted on twitter right so you know i mean i i mean obviously i think maybe some people might be joking some of them might be trolling but i think there might be some people might think it unironically so but it's kind of strange it's kind of creepy it's kind of cult like to me uh, they, they just revere him like the North Koreans revere their dictator. It's just a cult of personality, but nothing really, like, divine about it. It's just the hero worship is so strong. Right. And so... Like, he's not, it's not like... A, they're not like a pharaohs or Caesars, which were god kings. Right. So, I don't think you should worship anybody. Like, I think anybody could also be subject to criticism. Like, to think that there's no fault and nobody is not true... Because everybody has faults. Everybody has their own personal issues. And so if somebody criticized Trump, it's not because they have, quote unquote, Trump derangement syndrome or something. I think there are legit criticism that could be levied towards the president that's actually concerning that could be authoritative. And so you cannot just dismiss the criticism automatically just because it's your emperor god, whatever. Uh, that's but, true. Um, now, for the sins of the far left, uh, what do you make of all this woke shit in today's "quote unquote" entertainment? Uh, the queer baiting, the sexualizing of kids, and all this censorship of mild conservatives. Okay, that's like a lot of packaging right here. So, uh, now let's start with the uh, the woke shit, like um, drag queens. I mean, not yeah, drag kids. Sorry, but like drag kids are just disgusting. Now, I don't have any problem if people want to be like Ruth Paul when they're 18 years old. But that's the thing. They have to be freaking 18 years old to do that kind of stuff. To be a drag queen is to also sexualize yourself. And so when I hear these stories of these little, little kids putting on like drag makeup and wigs and stuff to sexualize their bodies... And then to go to the, like these bars and do these sort of pat, it's like the most That's creepy thing ever. It's like I don't understand why there are so many people defending that kind of shit. Like, obviously it's wrong. It's not just the drag queens. I mean, the drag kids that I have a problem with, but I also have problems with beauty patterns patterns for the same exact reason because they're sexualizing little girls into these kind of dresses to be sexy. So I'm against both of them. As far as, like, the woke shit for, like, uh, Netflix shows and stuff. Try, trying to make everything trying to make everything gay. Like, almost every female's lesbian and all this, uh, yeah, all that. Right, right. So, I don't think because there's a character that's gay, that's automatically woke. Obviously, there could be, like, characters that are just shoe hand just to be gay. But I also think there probably are moments in shows where it just feels natural. Like, for example, I know for a fact that uh, some characters are shooting hand just to be, like, black or whatever, even though they're based upon pre-established characters. And so I don't think it's good to just shoe hand, like, the uh, pre-established characters as a different orientation or a different race. I think if you were to make a gay character or like a gay like a minority character, that they should actually be their own original characters. There with the recent one with relation to the borders and all that. Right. <laughs> right, right. But I think that as long as like there's of course um characters that happen to be gay that actually don't actually focus on their gayness or being minority or whatever. I have no problems with like gay characters right. just yeah, being. I don't, mind, I don't mind if they pop in once in a while, but this is yeah. pandering. This too much. It, it's it's not really realistic and doesn't work with the stories a lot of the times. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like I remember there was this one um, account on Twitter. His name is One Angry Gamer. You guys probably heard of him. Where he was just like freaking out over like anything that has anything gay related. So, for example, he was just freaking the fuck out about, like, uh, what was it? After, like, that that after show where it's, like, uh, talking animals. And they had, like, some sort of gay wedding. He was just 
freaking out about that whole entire scene. And then he was also freaking about that Castlevania character. I think he was bisexual, whatever. He was just going into graphic detail about uh, sex and what. It's like, dude, like you obviously are like obsessed with this kind of stuff. Like, why do you keep doing it time and time again? Like, it's it's one thing that you know criticized for like shoehorning characters, but to just go after characters because they happen to be gay in the show, really, right? It's just. Uh... I mean, it's a, it becomes bad when it more or less looks like it's the character's just there to, to be a token character. Right. It's not like, if they're going to put it, like, it's, it's better like if the sex of the character is not really what's focused on, it's like the, what's the actual development of the character. And like the, then you have a South Park, which a show we need in these, t- these crazy times, which rips off. <laughs> body like absolutely everybody yeah it's kind of funny because there was this one episode of south park i saw where it was like this transgender competition and it was like the funniest shit ever transgender yeah it was like it was like this guy lifting up the weights yeah yeah but then then he was was a randy savage um like a randy savage um model sort of Modeled right, 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 and also there's my favorite episode. Randy so, Savage. Yeah, like my favorite episode so far this year has been like the China episode, where that guy tried to sell marijuana to China. It was like the funniest shit ever, too. And then there's um, but then there's also it's getting into animated stuff like the Simpsons tried um, well they got rid of a poof finally after all this struggle and that's. Sh- all this offense is just retroactive. Like nobody, literally nobody had a problem with him back in the day. What's funny is because like the Simpsons just literally is like a stereotype of everybody. It's not just you know a poo. Like everybody was like yeah. a stereotype. Everybody's a stereotype. Yeah. Like of course you have like Krusty the Clown, like a stereotype of clowns. You have freaking like Homer Simpson as the stupid dad. <laughs> and then of course like uh, Brown Keeper really as like the Angry Scotsman, yeah, and of course, cool. like stupid cops, and so so <laughs> basically everybody was like a stereotype in that show. So he was treated as equal, like everybody else. Yeah, and also um, Family Guy, which is just so hard left leaning, it's not even funny anymore. But they all they also took a whack at this uh, woke stuff. At one time, they were like. Yeah, I'm typing on my Instagram, bro, and I'm all posting, bro, and I'm all, I'm all offended, bro. Yeah, there was also for South Park, they have a whole entire episode just making fun of these uh, SJW types. And it's kind of funny because besides, like, before, like, this whole entire poo controversy, the Simpsons also made fun of the college campus culture there. And it was also pretty funny, too. But it's kind of yeah. sad that they also cave in, too, so it kind of made the episodes kind of pointless. Well, thank thank God Futurama stopped uh, stopped its run before they could taint that. Yeah, there was also this new show from the creator of The Simpsons. It's called Enchanted on Netflix, and it's, um, it's pretty okay. It kind of reminds me so much about Futurama, but I don't think it's as funny as it, but it's still okay. And it has also, a similar art style to Futurama. Yeah. Um, sci-fi references is what partially what made Futurama great. Right. And this one is like more like, you know, medieval and more Game of Strong kind of feel. Uh, like Thrones, yeah. Yeah. I, I still think Rome is better than Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm still kind of disappointed with the finale for Game of Thrones. Like everything else was good, but the finale. Yeah, they, they had a water bottle even a few episodes after. Yeah, they after they caught the coffee cup incident. Yeah, it's kind of funny because <laughs> like after they pointed out that they had the water bottles in some shots, they went back and actually removed it for like the um, home releases that I got. But it's still like freaking dark as all shit for those battle scenes. Like it's shot super dark. Yeah, this like um, Game of Thrones was like wrestling back in the Attitude Era. Everybody looked forward to it. Like, I am not missing, like, uh, like I'm gonna miss work for this. I'm not going to work for this. I gotta see this. Uh, 
Yeah, they even have like these freaking wash parties at bars for Game of Thrones. Yeah. I'm and now, like, everybody got disappointed. I normally just had to. I would say the ending of Game of Thrones sucked. What? I said the ending of Game of Thrones sucked. I still got to binge on it some more, so. I'm trying to spoil it. Well, all that really matters is that we got to see a bunch of naked women in Game of Thrones. Yeah. That, that's really all that. <laughs> yeah, but during the, time, during the time period it was based on, you could kill for stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Like the whole naked, like that's kind of funny because like most HB, HB, HBO shows actually have uh, naked women. If you really think about it, like yeah, it's also for like Westwood too. If you really look close enough, like there's also plenty of naked women. It's not just men, women, but it's also men too. So. All the naked women would fit perfectly in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> but is there any more uh, any more questions so far? No, oh, that's about oh, it. No, we're actually uh, approaching the end. Uh, so I was thinking, you um, you got anything you want to um, talk about with Tyler? Um, Carlos. Who's Carlos? Yeah, who is Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> um, games. Like my favorite games. Yeah. Um, my favorite games are like, uh, hmm. If I really had to make a list right now, Resident Evil Four, and it's also uh, God Hand. I also like God Hand. I also like uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. I also like uh, the Resident Evil 2 remake. That's also pretty awesome. Like, I think it's, like, one of the best ones so far for the remake series. Um, But in general, I play, like, different types of games. I play, like, action, horror, adventure, platformers. And so when I saw like their announcement about like the Crash Bandicoot collection or like uh, Spiral the Dragon, wow. I immediately got the games and I just love playing those games because those were my childhood stuff. Love Spir- love Spiral and Crash. Oh yeah. And I think the best one of the Crash trilogy from the past was uh, Warped. Mm, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, Warps. But my second favorite was um, it was like the Rapid Cortex. Um, as far as, like, the other platformers I used to play in the past, I used to play, like, a lot of Jack and Dexter, like, Jack 1, Jack 2, Jack 3. Uh, I also used to play Ratchet and Clank, and it's kind of funny. I only played a PS2 game for Ratchet and Clank, but I never played the newer ones yet. You mean uh, Cortex Strikes Back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 Ratchet and Clank. That's a different series. Yeah, I was talking about the... The Crash trilogy, but yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 but yeah, that's like my uh, second favorite game for Rafa Cortex. No, 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 not Rafa Cortex. Yeah, but Cor- Str- Cortex Strikes Back. Cortex Strikes Back. Yeah, that's my second favorite game in the franchise. That's it. Oh. And there's, um, of course, we all love those uh, PS1 classics like Tomb Raider and uh, 1 and 2 and then Tekken 3 and all the way up to Metal Gear Solid, the first one, and Parasite Eve and Final Fantasy 7 and 8. It's kind of funny because I feel like Metal Gear Solid 1 is like a blessing and a curse because for that game, it kind of made games more cinematic. But yeah. now, because now that it made it more cinematic, like everybody want to replicate it and it makes games less fun. So, but, but it is revolutionary. That with yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and Parasite Eve, like video games got more sophisticated and complex from that point on. Yeah. Like, like before that. Games were just games, just fat pastimes. You weren't really meant to think about them that much. Right. You know, think Pong. Pong, Pac-Man. Yeah. Not really deep, story-driven games. <laughs> well, I, also really, I also really love uh, Max Payne and the that and the second one and the Kingdom Hearts 2 and 
Oh man, like um, it's kind of funny because I got that collection for uh, PS4 for Kingdom Hearts, and I just loved those games, especially like um, the mm. second game. And it's kind of funny because prior to me getting the the PS4 collection, I had the PS2 games, but I wanted to get like the other games, so I figured one I get the collection and. It's, it still amazes me how good it looks, even though it was, like, made in 2005. Yeah. It's amazing how it looks. Like, Love and it. also, like, there's another game that's also looked pretty good, even though it's really, really old. It's, like, uh, Silent Hill 2 and 3. They still look really good for games that came out in 2001 and 2003. And, um, what was I going to say next? Yeah, especially Metal Gear Solid is my favorite series, and Assassin's Creed also, since I'm a history buff. I don't think I've ever played any sort of Assassin's Creed game, but uh, I want to play it in the future, though. I'm sorry, you you got to get to it. Okay, I will try to at least play the first one, at least. Play them in, uh, I would say play them in chronological order, but play the first one also, so you can get a feel for it. Okay. All right. All right. Well... That was it was nice having a conversation with you. This should be up um, you know, maybe by tomorrow sometime. I'll make sure to send you the link. Okay, that sounds fantastic. And also I really appreciate you two talking to me and interviewing me. It's been fun sharing my thoughts and perspective with you guys. And I guess should I just like send my uh social media information for everybody else? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can follow me on uh Twitter Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, at Tyler Preston 20. And I cover a variety of different topics. I talk about current events. I talk about the games. Godzilla. I talk about just anything on my mind. So check me out on my YouTube channel at Tyler Preston 20. All right. All right. Credit audience, go subscribe to his channel and follow him on Twitter. All right, this has been the Purple Pill Preston, and uh, see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.